Fire up. Again. How's everybody doing? Fire up. Good. How many people in this room want to make a lot of money? Say aye. Aye. Okay, good. So the first thing that we want to do, a lot of you guys don't know me, you'll get, but you're going to learn today. Does that make sense? <laughs> How many of you guys seen Kevin Hart? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, good. So when I do one of these uh, trainings, I always like to do it. First of all, we want to get people's energy up. And one of the things that I've realized, and maybe you can attest to this, when we find people that make a lot of money, do they have a lot of energy or they don't? Yeah. They do. Yes. What about unsuccessful people? Do unsuccessful people, here's the thing. We ask them a question. What's up? What do most people say? Nothing. 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 Here's my question. Can you afford for nothing to be us? Nope. nope. No. So when somebody asks me, what's up, JC? Everything, baby. Rock it. It's a good day to make some money. Yes, sir. It's a good day to help some people. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I'm going to ask as we move forward in this training is I'm going to ask, I'm going to give you 100% of me. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. And I ask 100% of you. Is that fair? Yes. yes. You know how they say 50-50? No, that's for average people. The elite, we go 100-100 every time. No excuses. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to pick up the energy from time to time. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. And then I would appreciate if you guys answer. Is that fair? Yes. yes. Okay, good. A little bit about myself. Uh, uh, I'm 33 years old. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I got started in the industry of network marketing at 18. And um, I was born in Mexico, brought to this country at age six, saw my single mom raising three boys. Okay, and I was raised in an environment where one single mom was raising three, four, five kids. But three, four, five kids, when they get older, can't retire one single mom. Can anybody relate? Yes. Oh, okay, so one of my goals was to retire my mom. Okay, I'm 33 years old. Seven years ago, my mom used to work for a rich lady in Beverly Hills, and I went up to her and I said, Mom, you don't have to go to work tomorrow. As a matter of fact, you don't have to go to work ever again. Welcome to the rest of your life. And that's been the case ever since then. And one of the reasons was because of the mindset and the philosophies that my mentors taught me. So I want to share some of that information with you guys, okay? Um, so th th that's my story. I'm not going to get into the details of it, but right now what I want to talk about is a teachability index. Oh, yeah. So th those of you guys taking notes, I'd like for you guys to uh, write this. So the teachability index, we're talking about your willingness to learn versus your willingness to change. So how willing to learn are you? So if you're here... Are you taking notes? If you don't have a notepad, are you taking your phone out and texting yourself this information? Because successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. Like take notes. Not only take notes, but review those notes and apply those notes. So your willingness to learn on a scale of 1 to 10, write that down. Honestly, ask yourself, because you can't lie to yourself. You know what the answer is. Hmm. I'm not going to see your answers. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how willing to learn are you? Or do you take the notes? Do you read 10 pages of a good book a day? Listen to a good audio 30 minutes a day? That's what I train my team. I've got a sales organization of 35,000 people in more than 50 countries. Every time they pay a membership, I get paid a couple bucks. Every time they make a sale, I get paid a couple bucks. And the reason why is because of the leadership that people go out there, that we go out there and do, and the systems that we put in place for these people to do. And one of the things is you must read 10 pages of a good book every single day. Okay, or 30 minutes of a good audio. So like, for instance, I tell people, if you're broke, you should not have a big screen TV, man. You shouldn't have a comfortable living room set. You're broke. Rich people educate themselves while poor people entertain themselves. Yes or yes? Yeah. Yes. How many of you guys can agree with me? Say yes. 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 How many of you guys are excited? Say aye. 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 Get excited. Success loves energy and success loves speed and success loves successful people. Notice a su su successful person. They're always walking fast. They're always in the go. They shake your hand firm. Yes or yes? Yes. 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 Even if they don't know where they're going, they're going to get there fast. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Okay? They're always firm. So your willingness to learn, scale of 1 to 10. Now multiply that by your willingness to change. How willing are you to change on a scale of 1 to 10? So get those two numbers down. How willing to learn am I? And how willing to change am I? So when you got people that come in here, you guys got incredible real estate professionals here that train you on things to do to make more money. Okay, so if they teach you on a scale of 1 to 10, how, how willing to learn, and then how willing to make those necessary changes are you? Now you multiply those two numbers. Let's go to the next slide, by the way. Now you multiply those two numbers. Your number should be at a minimum 90. That means that you got to have a 10 and a 9 and work that 9 to get to a 10. If not, you're kidding yourself. But the good thing is that if, I want everybody to do a little exercise with me. Everybody close your eyes, and I'm looking, even the cool people, close your eyes. Now imagine you're at the ATM, you punch in your card, everybody take out your hands as if you're putting the card in the ATM. Put in your code, don't put your real code because then I'll know what it is. Take all your money. <laughs> put your code in now. Now hit balance. Now ask yourself, 
Do I like what I see? Okay, just ask yourself, don't answer. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Good stuff. If you like what you see, guess who that is thanks to? Say, me. 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 If you don't like what you see, guess who that is thanks to? Me. Me. So that means that you're the problem and the solution. Because our past results and actions has got us to where we are. Click, click on it one more time. Oh, it's fine. Okay. It's gonna, it, it, the phone's going to die for those of you guys on Facebook Live, so I apologize. 15, 50%. Okay, good. We're making a lot of phone calls, okay? So by, what is it, 1030, that phone is already starting at 100, it's already at uh, 90. So Joe Frazier said a quote, he says, you can map out a fight plan or a life plan, but when the action starts, you're down to your reflexes and it doesn't go as you plan, okay? That's when your road work shows. If you cheated in the dark of the morning, well, now you're getting found out now under the bright lights. What does that mean? Write this down, so, uh, uh, time, will either promote me or expose me. Time will either promote me or expose me. Let's go to the next slide. So if time is either gonna promote you or expose you, the actions that we do right now, the actions that we do in the fourth quarter to finish off the year, okay, are gonna re reflect what January 1st looks like. We're gonna reflect what 2017 looks like. Here's what we'll say, tomorrow, someday. Let me ask you a question. Is Sunday in the calendar? No. no. Oh. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, a few Sunday with someday. <laughs> but someday doesn't exist. Today is the day TNT. That's why I'm explosive. Today, not tomorrow. TNT. I want to make money. Here's the deal. Success is my duty. I have a two-year-old son. Before I had a two-year-old son, I knew I'm going to be my son's hero. When he goes to school, I'm going to take him to school. I'm gonna, I, I, we're, we're gonna go, me, me and my beautiful girl, you can see that I'm a good salesperson because she's back recording me in red, okay? <laughs> and her son, I'm a good salesperson, okay? She, she's like, I don't wanna go out, just I disagree. <laughs> you don't know me yet, relax, it's cool, right? But check this out. I always knew I'm gonna be my son's hero, not LeBron James, not some athlete or some movie star on TV, I'm gonna be my son's hero. You know why? Because I'm gonna work my ass off. I'm gonna work harder than the next person. When the next person is saying, you know what? I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to say, I'm going to work hard. When they're soaking up the sun, I'm soaking up ideas. When they're sleeping in on a Saturday, I'm going to have Saturday training like this. When they're not taking notes, I'm taking notes. If I was in real estate, they're not knocking on doors. I'm knocking on doors. I'm knocking on more doors. I'm doing more open houses. I'm making more clients, calling more clients, working more weekends, showing more properties, getting more listings. That's what I'm doing that what other people are not willing to do. You know why? Because I realize that if I hang out with five broke people, I'm going to be number six. Mm -hmm. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Also broke people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Broke people. So let's go next slide. Here's the Navy SEAL philosophy. The more you sweat in times of peace, the less you bleed in times of war. Next slide. The more you sweat in times of peace, the less you bleed in times of war. The more you pay the price right now in your training, as iron sharpens iron, so does man sharpen man. The more you bleed out there, the more prepared you are here, the, the better prepared you get here, the better prepared you are out there. Click on it one more time. Okay, so check this out. Everything starts with philosophies. We all have philosophies. So it starts from philosophies, okay? And then philosophies lead to attitude. Attitude leads to actions. Actions lead to results, and results lead to lifestyle. So let me give you a couple of philosophies, okay? Successful people say, in order to succeed, I must double my rate of failure. Double my rate of failure. See, when we were in school, didn't the teacher go through all the good answers? And then the wrong ones, didn't they mark it in red? Because mm -hmm. most people are fault finders. As you build a team, as you build a company, you're not a fault finder. You're a win finder. But most people are programmed to be fault finders. Right? You either win or you learn. You don't lose. I don't lose. I win some. And I learn some. See, that's a philosophy, though. So I'm not afraid to lose. I'm not a, if, if in order to succeed, I must double my rate of failure. I'm cool with that. I don't mind failing because it's not failing. It's learning. It's learning experiences, right? So these are the philosophies, okay? Successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. I can, I will, and I must succeed. Click it again. Because here's what happens. If the philosophies are positive, the attitude is positive. Leads to the actions being positive. The results being positive and ultimately your lifestyle is what? Positive. Is what? Positive. positive. Exactly. It's positive, right? So, the dictionary is the only place where success comes before work. Yes or yes? 
Yes. yes. How many of you guys know some people that should have been here? Oh, a lot of yeah? them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? And how many people have people say, yeah, I'm going to be there this time. I'm going to make it happen. How many guys have people say that? This year. Like, for instance, New Year's resolutions. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. That's just an excuse to stall. Hmm. New Year's resolutions. You go to the gym. Isn't the gym full? Mm-hmm. Come about March or April, those same people are gone. Yes or yes? Yes. New Year's resolutions. I told my team, listen, I'm going to write a book. It's going to have one page. It's going to say, get off your ass. <laughs> That's what the book's going to say. You know why? Because it's simple. Most people procrastinate, and they don't understand that procrastination is a cornerstone to poverty. Because, because here's what happens. It's how I've come to realize, and I've been taught. All I am is a parent. The stuff that my mentors taught me, said to me, I repeat, but I did them. So very few of the things that I'm telling you are original, so I'm not trying to take credit for them. But what I am taking credit for is the results that they've created in my life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to the next one. I get paid based on the size of the problems that I solve. We are, as a business person, as a leader, we are problem solvers. Do you guys have problems in your business? Yes. yes. So we look at them as situations. So here's how you identify them. Here's a philosophy. <coughs> this out. If money or people can solve it, it's not a problem. It's a situation. See how that works? If money or people can solve it, it's not a problem. It's a situation. I, I, I trip out on how many people come often and they're like, well, JC, we have a problem and they're so worried about the stuff. I'm like, all right, calm down. How can we fix this situation? First, I had a training I was doing at my office years ago and we had just got that new office. There was no light. It was supposed to be on that Saturday morning. They were not. So this guy comes to me. His name's Ivan. He's like, we have a big problem. As I'm getting over my briefcase and my suit, I'm like, what's, what's the problem? Because we have no lights. I said, well, there's a lot of natural light from outside. We've got big windows. Worst case scenario, we'll do that. And he says, yeah, but what about the PowerPoint? I said, that's a good point. It's a long training. I usually do trainings for three hours up to eight hours in a day. And I said, why don't we do this? Hold on. And I go to next door to the neighbor. I talk to her. I said, do you mind if I pay you some money? I'm going to run an extension cord from your office to my office, but I'll pay you some money. So we ran an extension cord. We went to Home Depot because we got there early. We're prepared. We go to Home Depot. We buy a big old extension, long extension cord. We connect it to our office, run it all the way. We put duct tape on top of it, and we get it going. Now, was that the most professional thing? No. But I, people ask me, what do you do? Whatever it takes. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. What do you do, JC? Whatever it takes. I don't, I, I don't get startled because you can tell the size of a man or a woman by the size of the problem that gets them down. So I find solutions. Uh, Tony Robbins says, it isn't resources that you need. It's your, res- your biggest resource is your resourcefulness. Mm-hmm. So in that example, we solve situations. So if you're a broker, if you're a realtor, you solve situations over and over and over. Mm-hmm. And you get paid based on the size of the problems that, fall- that happen. Has anybody in this room ever had escrows fall? Yeah, yeah. I was Multiple. a real estate agent. And one of them had escrows fall. Sure, that's not a record, but that hurts. Can we agree? Yeah. Yes. I was expecting over 50 grand, I got like seven. Hmm. Does that happen? Yes. Yeah. There's two people. Somebody could, these situations, notice I call them situations because I'm a champion. Okay. Everybody say, I am a champion. I, I am, am a champion. champion. Even the cool people say, I am a champion. I, I am, am a champion. champion. Because guess what? In stuff like that, most people shrink, some people rise. Mm-hmm. So when that happens, guess what I got to do? I got to put more deals in escrow. I got to work my ass off. If I want to make 50 grand, I should have 15 deals in escrow, not five. I should have 20 deals in escrow, not five, because in the mirror, that is a solution. It's, that's also the problem. Okay? If you want to fail, follow the masses. That's such a key one. See, that's a philosophy. Watch this. In any sales organization, 20% of the organization will do 80% of the production. Mm-hmm. Look at it. 20% of the organization will do 20%, 80% of the production, and 80% of the people in that office do 20%. Anybody ever met some busy, broke people? <laughs> yes, there's a lot of them. That's activity versus productivity. I know a lot of busy, like you're really good at being busy doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, bro. Oh, yeah, man, I've been in the office eight hours. <laughs> How many clients, here's what I call it. How many times are you showing the plan. Mm. You got a prospect, you're pre-qualified, you show the plan, you show a property, you're showing the plan. That is the money-making activities. How much MMA are you doing? I'm not talking about the UFC MMA. I'm talking about how much money-making activities are you doing? Not time-wasting activities. I'm talking about productivity. 
That is the difference. So if you want to fail follow the masses, look at what the masses are doing. Even in your office and outside. Watch what they're doing, do what they do, and you'll get what they got. Which is not much. If it's about what, 40 of us here. If we all run in that direction, we storm out and run in that direction. Somebody walking this way, they won't ask no questions. You see this group running? Guess what they're gonna do? Run in that direction. Because most people are used to following the masses. See, we're those few. You guys ever see a, a, a fish swimming up the stream? Yeah. That's who we are, the champions. Everybody is doing one thing. People, how many of you guys got criticized? Say, hey, come on, you, you're selling real estate? Seriously? Mm -hmm. You don't make any money till you make a sale? Come on, bro, get a real job. You're working on a Saturday morning? How many of you guys ever got, got, got negative yep. from people? Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. Time. And if you get criticized for the things that you're doing, you're probably doing the right thing. 34 people. Because now. they don't understand. They don't understand. For, because for 14,000 hours, from kindergarten to the 12th grade, somebody told you, be more realistic. Kindergarten, 12th grade, 14,000 hours. Somebody told you to be more realistic. Somebody told you, you can't drive those kind of cars. You can't live in that kind of house. You can't live that kind of lifestyle. You can't make that kind of money. Can we agree? Yes. So for 14,000 hours, somebody programmed us for mediocrity. Right? So that's why it's so hard for people. People think, wow, I remember when I had a part-time job. 40 <laughs> hours a week? You want to achieve financial freedom and you're working 40 hours a week? You're kidding yourself, man. You should go to the laugh factory. That's a good joke. You want to reach financial freedom working 40 hours? Guys work real estate part time by a show of hands. Okay, great. Here's a philosophy. I work nine to five in my job, and I work five to nine in my business, plus weekends. If you dedicate forty hours a week to make somebody else rich, why not dedicate at least half of that time to make yourself rich? Mm -hmm. Yes or yes? Yes. And that's a philosophy. Oh, but it's because I'm tired. They asked Sam Walton, "How many hours should you work?" He says, "Any twelve hours in the day is." But society and the government told you that after eight hours you're tired, and you believe you're tired, but that's BS. You're tired because you believe you're tired because everybody else says that they're tired after eight hours. No, you're not. You're designed for more, and you're built for greatness. Okay? And you could go longer, but you see everybody else tired. So you guess what, monkey see, monkey see? Let's go to the next slide. I was at the airport one day, and I'm going relatively fast with this stuff. By the way, what time is it? Okay, good. I got about 15 minutes. So guess what? I was at the airport, and there's this big old long security line. This is how people are. Then they open up another security line. You guys know those long security lines? LAX, that's why I like to fly to Long Beach. So, long, long line. They open up a new one. Nobody's going. They all look, but they don't go. Because they're afraid of what others may think. So I got my little roller bag. Cool, you know, you have to roll sideways, the one that, you know, the, the wheels turn. I love it. Then I, I start walking in that direction, and I walk right by security. Cut about 30 feet. Guess what they do now? Now they follow. Because the average person is programmed to follow. And they care about what other people think. Mm -hmm. What are other people going to think? What if I go over there? They say, excuse me, sir. You can't go through this line. So what? Let me go get back in the line. That's it. What are you, in elementary school? People are going to make fun of you. Ah, what do you need? You went through there and they didn't let you go? What's the big deal? Same thing with success. Same thing with business. Some people are too damn afraid of what other people think. That's why they don't achieve things that they want to achieve. But guess what? My son deserves me to be the best version of me. I'm going to take him to school. I'm going to go on his field trip with him. I could do that now. My mother deserves that. My girl deserves that. So success is my duty. So anybody's opinion doesn't matter to me. There might be somebody here who says, this guy's got too much to drink, too much coffee. And you know why I drink coffee? Not because I need it to wake up. I drink it because I like it. I like the taste. But I could go any given day without coffee. And my energy is always like this. I'm 33 years old, going to, going to 24. Because of the lifestyle that I live, and because I believe it. Okay? Let's go. Successful people philosophies. I'd rather be happy than rich. How many of people say that? <laughs> I'd rather be both. <laughs> rich people believe I could be happy and rich. But in order to be rich, I got to work harder than the next person. And I gotta be consistent because there's two reasons why people don't achieve what they wanna achieve. They're not doing something right or they're not doing something enough. Bottom line. They're not doing something right or they're not doing something often enough. Because you can do the right thing, not often enough, you're not gonna achieve the results. Or you do the right thing, but you start and stop and start and stop. It's about consistency. 
Anybody ever heard an apple a day keeps a doctor away? It's an apple a day, right? Not seven apples on Sunday, right? It's an apple a day. Not seven apples on Sunday. What happens if Tapatio and I go to the gym on Sunday for eight hours? Is that going to work? No. No. We got to be consistent. Same thing with this business. Some people, watch, some, you guys are going to get some people in January come, hey, bro, this time, I'm going to make it happen, bro. I'm going to be your top producer. Remember me? You remember me? He's going to say, all right, go do it. No, you don't get it, bro. You don't get it. What if you close this? Oh, I'm gone, bro. Everybody's going to be in my rearview mirror. This is what you should say to him. Just go do it. No, but you don't get it. My kids are going to school now. So I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> Sounds good, bro. Just go do it. You're right. Because the world is full of joiners and temporarily motivated people. Mm -hmm. Temporary. It's easy to be temporarily motivated. It's easy to be motivated in January to lose weight. Wait till January. Start hitting the gym right now. Start knocking on more doors now. Start working Saturdays and Sundays. Start doing what is necessary. What, what should I do? How long should I go until? Until, what, until you achieve your desired results. That's how long you should go until. Until I win. Okay. Thank God it's Friday. Make, uh, click it again. Thank God it's Friday. That's a broke person philosophy. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Monday, man. More people are looking to work. Thank God it's any day. Because I'm work any. i open for business all the time. Mm -hmm. If I was a real estate agent, what do you do? I help people achieve the American dream. And I'm the absolute best at it. Here's my business card. That's the difference of people like, you're like secret agents. Some of you guys have friends that don't know you're a realtor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You should have been making a list of 200 people that you know minimum with names and numbers and call every single one of them to let them know. I am now a real estate professional. Mm -hmm. For any of your real estate needs, I'm the guy to call. Mm -hmm. This is going to be what I'm dedicating my life to. This is my profession from now on. Because if they don't know, there's no shot. Now, who knows? They might not give you the business, but at least they know. But don't let them not give you the business because you didn't make the phone call. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So some people are over here, they want to achieve big things, right? They want to achieve a million dollar income with a minimum wage attitude and work ethic. <laughs> and it just doesn't work, man. It's an insult. See, is there cameras in here? Yes. Okay, yes. Where, there, there's a camera. It's like the camera. Imagine the camera's success and success watching you. We got plenty of cameras here, guys. Watching you when nobody else is watching. And success, uh, 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 four o'clock, you're supposed to go knock on doors. Success one, you're like, you know what, man, I've had a long day. I'll knock on doors tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Success watcher says, you don't deserve me to come. You want me to come. In front of other people, you pretend like you want me there, but you're not knocking on doors? Or you knock on doors for an hour, bro. Your goal was 100 doors or 150 doors or whatever it was. You knocked on 20. You got a, reje a couple of rejections, a couple of rude people, and all of a sudden you withered away and got sad, felt sorry for yourself. How many of you guys ever had rude people when you're knocking on doors and doing something like that? Rude all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can do one of two things. Use that as motivation. Use that as reasons or excuses. You can use that as an excuse. Oh, man, people are rude. That sucks. Or oh, you need it as an excuse. It's cool. Because let me tell you something. Remember this. Somebody will say, I told you so. Here's what I mean. Some of you guys got friends and family members. Unfortunately, there's dream stealers. A lot of those dream stealers are cleverly disguised as friends and family. Okay? And they're waiting for the day that they can say, I told you, bro. That's it. Come on. I'll, I'll get you a job where I work. You can work for somebody else instead of working for yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or your results will say, I told you so. When you show up in your new car, whatever that car may be, in your new suit, whatever the color that suit may be, with your power tie, and your success, where you've got listings, and you've got buyers, and you've got even buyer's agents, I mean, you got it going on. You don't have to say, I told you so. Your results will say, I told you so. Then people go from, I told you so, to, I always knew. <laughs> I always knew, bro, you could do it. How many of you guys want to get to that point? Mm -hmm. It'll happen. How many of you guys want to get to that point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So you notice the difference? Okay. Money's a root of all evil. And then it, uh, money's a root of all evil is a, is a broke person's philosophy. No, it's not. Imagine Mother Teresa with a big bank account. <laughs> Would she help more people? Yeah. Yes. So is money a root of all evil? No. 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 That's what, here's the thing. That's what unsuccessful say to justify not making enough money and not working hard for it. Right. I love to make a lot of money because I could donate more money, right? I could help more people, and I could inspire more people. In the book, The Science of Getting Riches says, okay, the best way to help the poor is not to be one of them. Yes. The poor don't need charity. They need inspiration. 
Now you can do charity, but also inspire them. Show them that you can too, because at 18 years old, I didn't have a social security number. I couldn't go to school and get student loans. I couldn't get a job. I went to McDonald's, right? They're like, oh, you're not going to be loving this. <laughs> you can't get a job. <laughs> Burger King said, you can't have a chill way, bro. Right? You can't get a job. You are, Ill you are an illegal alien. So I got started network marketing. Got a tax ID number. They got me started, and I started network marketing. Made 60 bucks my first six months. But then I started, I kept focused. I said, they said, if you stick and stay, you'll get your pay. Mm -hmm. If you stick and stay. But here's the thing. Just like network marketing, so is real estate. You got to work, 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 check. You better, ahead of time, I better manage your expectations right now. I was a real estate agent for a couple of months for three years. You got to work, 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 check. Then you go work, 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 check. Then you go work, work, check. Then you go work, check. Work, check, check. Work, check, 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 check. Work, check, 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 check. Vacation. Check, 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 check. Vacation. Work. Because now you got all these businesses, all these clients. You got some buyer's agents. You got some listing agents. Because you built a badass name, a brand, credibility. Because you paid the price. Mm -hmm. And when you achieve that level, you don't apologize to people for your success. Just, but don't make excuses for your failure either. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how it goes, and that's my philosophy. But it, at first, it's like pushing a big old heavy Cadillac. Imagine a 1978 Cadillac. Big old heavy thing. And we keep pushing, we keep pushing, we keep pushing. And eventually, we get this car rolling. Eventually, you can push that car with one finger. Yes or yes? Yeah. 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 But if somebody asks, which one of those pushes got that car to move? You can't say none of them. It's all of them combined without stopping. And momentum. And write this down. Momentum is the hardest thing to get in business. And it's the easiest thing to lose. Yep. Mm -hmm. Momentum, let's go to the next slide, is the hardest thing to get and the easiest thing to lose. I have to see in order to believe. That's unsuccessful people. I have to see in order to believe. No, no, no. I have to first believe and then I'm going to see. See, here's the way it goes. Be, do, have. I gotta become the person because if having the things that you want, being the person that you are, if it was possible to have the things that you wanted, being the person that you are, you'd already have them. Does that make sense? Man, that's a nugget right there. If having the things that you want, if it was possible to have the things that you want, being the person that you are right now, you'd already have them. So that's why you gotta evolve. You gotta work on yourself every day. Not just in your work, but on yourself. So it's be, do, have. You gotta become the person. Be the person. If your goal is to make 50 grand a month, <coughs> have 20 listings, have tons of agents where you're rejecting clients. Like, I can't take you, I, I got too many clients. Go to that other guy that, that's slacking. <laughs> that's not doing the fundamentals. That's not consistent. He's got time for you, I don't. He's begging for a client like you. I don't, I'm so, I don't have the time, sorry. How many of us will have that problem? Mm -hmm. It's a good problem to have? Yeah. yeah. So guess what? That person that you just imagined, how does that person look? How does that person dress? How does that person <coughs> act? What time does that person get to the office? What time do they leave? Do they work weekends? Do they have a positive attitude no matter what? Mm -hmm. Up or down 10, we fight to the end. Are they in a good mood only when they got an escrow closing and an escrow just closed, deals in the escrow? Or do they have a good mood, good attitude, no matter what, all the time? You got to be that person right now. That's how this universe works. Then you got to do the things that person does, and you'll be, and then you'll have. Be, do, have. But most people, they hear what they want. I want to have. Then, hey, bro, if I was making his type of money, man, I'd dress like him. I'd get here that early. I'd work that much. I'd be more, bro. Well, it doesn't work like that in the universe. You first got to become the person, pay the price up front and in full. There's no credit, there's no layaway for success. You got to pay the price up front and in full. Just like most people will not make it to a Saturday training. There's people watching me right now from their, from their uh, couch. They, they know they should have been at this training. They know they should have been working, and they're not. That's why they're broke, busted, and disgusted. <laughs> the price of a champion and the road of a champion is a lonely road. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that the road of a champion is a lonely road. You're working weekends. How many of you guys are working today and tomorrow? Okay, guess what? Smokes here, what do they do? Oh, partying, chilling, you know, at the sports bar. Watch, I'm going to watch the fights later on today, for sure. 
<laughs> but I could walk, I have six Saturdays and one Sunday, thanks to these philosophies. I don't even know, oftentimes I remember what day is it? I don't know. Last time I was getting ready on a Saturday to go to the office. Well, your office is closed on Saturday, baby. All Saturday. I guess I'll go to the gym. Because, but, but guess what? In the at first, I became that person. I said, whatever, here's why. I was uncoachable at times again. I was uncoachable at first. Okay. I was uncoachable at first. Then I said, I'm going to be coachable. Because being uncoachable isn't getting me what I want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, I'm going to be coachable. And I'm going to do it for a year. And here's what we teach people. You go on a 90-day blitz. 90 days AOA. All out massive action. Mm -hmm. 90 days. You have a talk with your spouse. You let your spouse know, baby, I'm going to be working hard. You're not going to see me that often. Okay? Because I'm building something for us. Now I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked before. I'm going to be busy. I'm not going to be in the house so much. But I'm doing this for us. You want a 90 day all out massive action. You're going to miss birthdays. You're going to miss baby showers. You might even miss some weddings. Gender reveal party. A gender reveal party. You, you might miss that stuff. <laughs> we have one. You know what I mean? So guess what? If one of my, the guys on my team said, hey, bro, I can't make it to your gender reveal party when we had our son Max. I said, because I'm on a 90 day place. I said, do your thing. I respect it. You'll make it to the next one. Okay? That's cool. But you go on a 90 day blitz, all out massive action. Okay? Let's go to the next slide. Because most people are victims. So click it a few times. <coughs> so here's what victims do. One more time. They blame other people, okay? They complain about everything, then they justify it. Oh, it's because my brokers didn't give me enough support. <laughs> you know, the office, they didn't train me enough. They blame other people. Then they complain. You know, the, the training was too short. I got there late, they didn't let me in. My train is you get there late, you don't get in. I pre-sell the ticket of my training. You paid for the ticket. You don't get there on time, doors are locked. No refunds. You know that ahead of time, though. So if you don't like it, don't show up. Don't buy your ticket. Okay? That's that's a, see that that that's a philosophy that we created. You're the you're either a champion, you either did or you didn't. Okay? So they, they then they complain about everything. Oh, they they close the doors on me. Oh, you know what? My pen wasn't writing. Or the training wasn't good. Or I wanted to get trained on this, but they trained on that. They complain about everything and then they justify. Ah, eh, money's in everything. They say things like it's because. No, but it's because. They use the word but a whole lot. Right? No, but this. I didn't do it because of that. It's because of this. No, no, no. Listen. A champion, here's the difference. That's a victim. Here's what a champion does. Simple. They take responsibility for 100% of their actions and results. And they make no excuses for it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I apologize. No excuses. I'll pay whatever price needs to be paid. No excuses. Then you got the best excuse. I didn't do it. No excuses. Let's go. One more slide. Okay. So, good. So, there. Leave it there. So, check this out. Some of you guys might have seen this. If A equals 1 and all the alphabets go to 26, okay? That means that knowledge, when you add it up, equals 96. Next slide. Okay. Hard work, you add them up, equals 98. One more. But check this out. But. Next one. One more. Attitude. Click it, equals 100. Remember, there's two things that we can control, our attitudes and our actions. That's two things you can control, your attitudes and your actions. That's it. The attitude that you have of a champion, I'm going to do it until, and if it doesn't happen, it's because of me. Things don't happen to me, things happen for me. That's my philosophy. Things don't happen to me, because that's a victim mentality. Things happen for me. That client fell out of escrow. That client backed out the last minute. That happened for me. I'm not a victim to my circumstances. I'm not a product of my environment. My environment is a product of me. That's the difference. When you walk into a room, there's two types of people. There's a person that walks into a room, light up the room because of their positive energy, because they're a winner. There's other people that dim the room. Some people are so, how many of you know some negative people? <laughs> some people are so negative they can walk into a dark room and develop. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of you guys will get that on the way home. <laughs> but it's cool, right? So, so you want to be that positive, upbeat winner. So, that's my time. I had about seven more slides, but that's my time. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me.